What's going on, guys? I bet you can't guess what I want to talk about today. If you said body armor and where it plays a role for the armed repaired citizen, give yourself a gold star. <clears throat> body armor is one of those things that, whew, man, if you look around the internet on forums and YouTube and everywhere else, <clears throat> there is just a plethora of opinions and, and commentary and such on the subject. So, since my channel is just about my thoughts and my opinions, I thought I'd give them to you. Now, got to keep that in mind. Like I've always told you, these are anything you hear on this channel is just my thoughts and my opinions. I'm fully open to being wrong on something. I am not an expert. Um, I'm an amateur expert, put it that way. Always open to being shown a better way, different way, etc. As of right now, today, here's where I stand. Just to go ahead and get all of it out of the way, because I know everybody's going to want to ask. This plate carrier is a shellback tactical, uh, tactical assault gear. Banshee plate carrier. Um, <clears throat> I've got it set up with their shoulder pads on it. Um, this is a high speed gear leader pouch right here with just my simple blowout kit. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five mags. These are my single AR mag shingles that I make um, over at my company, UW Gear. Check it out if you haven't. And this is a triple mag shingle that I make to go on the front. Then on this side, I've just got a small GP pouch just to hold various things, and I keep the rest of it completely clear. The only other thing that I've got is right here on my center line, um, I like to keep a small knife, a small fixed blade that is for getting somebody off the top of you if they happen to get on top of you and don't need to be on top of you. Or for whatever reason, you may need a little small fixed plate. This one is a Strider, because I know somebody's gonna ask. Um, this was a gift to me from my martial arts instructor, um, and it's something that I hold very dear and near to my, my heart, literally. I'm running some level four standalone ceramic plates um, I plan on upgrading those to uh, probably some AR500.com steel plates here in the very near future, hopefully. Um, a lot of benefits to, to the steel for long-term use for the armed citizen over ceramics. Uh, nothing wrong with ceramics, just in this context that we're talking about for the armed citizen, I just think that the steel is a better choice. Again, see the other video I did about steel plates on that, and that's something you know probably go into more more discussion on that later down the road. So, how does this play into the armed citizen? Well, you got to look at a, a number of different contexts and potential scenarios. If you're out in a really rural area whether it's just you and your family, um, friends, say you've got your small preparedness group together, whatever. In my opinion, if you're gonna try to run around in the woods and do security patrols and stuff, <clears throat> wearing this, plus your pack that you're gonna need to have, um, you're not gonna do it very long. Rifle plates like this, they're heavy. Can you carry them? Yes, obviously. You're going to do it day in and day out, all day long, over and over again? No. It's going to wear you out real quick. And even, even if you're in good shape, talk to guys that have been in the military and had to wear them all day long, all the time. Body armor gets heavy. Gets real heavy. Um, what it will do is slow you down. And if you're running small preparedness group, 
you're running your security patrols around your, your retreat, your property, whatever. In a rural area, out in the woods, etc. You're going to be a small team. I would venture to guess, ideally, you're probably not going to be more than a two-man team um, <clears throat> at best. If you're really, really fortunate and have got the manpower, you might be able to bump that up to three or four guys. That's going to be it. Unlike the military, you're not going to have you know 20 or 30 guys a whole platoon's worth um, at your disposal. You're not going to have all kinds of QRF backup that can just instantaneously be there, artillery support, etc. All topics we've discussed in other videos. You need to be able to move fast and light. You're not looking to get into a long, drawn-out gunfight. Now, people are going to argue, well, yeah, but if you've got the body armor on and it stops that one bullet from hitting you, well, that's great, but it's slowing you down, so it's increasing the chances that you're going to get hit because you can't move as fast and as quick. And there's a chance that the person shooting at you might not have good aim or they might have really good aim, and it ain't the plate that they hit you in. You got all kind of other stuff exposed. You take a hit in the leg, neck, head, whatever, in a really bad, catastrophic, raw, crap at the fan situation, you, you're, you're in trouble, big trouble. So, yes, the plate's can afford you some benefit, but there's also that negative to it, too. You want to be able to beat feet and move in a hurry to either outmaneuver somebody or plan Nike and get the heck out of Dodge, head back to where you've got friends at that can help you out, assess, and go from there. Um, say you've got your, your NPT, your Neighborhood Protection Team, and you're in a more urban area. Well, that opens up some, some different possibilities there. You're probably not going to be patrolling as far on foot just around your neighborhood or depending on the side of your neighborhood you may be. So it may or may not be a little bit better option there, but again, you're still taking that mobility uh, hit. That, that it's, it's going to slow you down, even the, the biggest and best. Um, you you got to think about that. For immediate home defense, this is one of a couple of areas where I think having body armor really shines. If you're in a situation or position, and pardon me just a second, guys, I'm going to do one thing here. Just so we can get comfortable in it. Pull up a chair and stay a while. Hey, that looks crappy. Let's do this so that you can actually see me. Bring it down to my level. How about that? Oh, there you are. Now you got to look me in the face again. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Home defense scenario. In a home defense scenario, if you're in a situation where maybe you don't have that MPT in place yet, if you don't have a, a bug out location to bug out to, you don't have that rural retreat. You don't have that big group. Maybe the only thing you can do is stay put in your home. That's where all your supplies are at. That's where your family's at. You don't have anywhere to go. Maybe your best option is just boarding everything up and making it look as abandoned as possible and hiding in place. Something like that. Yeah, I think body armor, that, that's an ideal situation body armor if you keep a good watch and you know somebody's fixing to hit you maybe it's you know looters bandits whatever throw that body armor on and stack mags that's that's one of a couple of ideal situations um, <clears throat> give yourself every advantage you can chances are you'll be standing in a fairly fixed position then that extra weight and the lack of maneuverability doesn't come into uh, come into play. Along those same lines, another situation 
where I think body armor is a good idea is if you do have that MPT, if you do have your, your preparedness group, you do have that rural retreat to go to, any of those situations, <clears throat> is when you're pulling, pulling guard duty. Um, if it's your turn to pull security in a, in a static position, if you're just manning a static location, by all means put the body armor on. Um, that, again, the maneuverability aspect goes away. It gives you a good, a good bit of protection for that stationary, stationary type duty. So, I think you got to have that balance in there. Get you a simple chest rig, backpack, belt kit, whatever is your preferred method uh, setup that you can be light and fast, go out on foot on patrol with for, for a reasonable amount of bit distance. But then also get you get your body armor set up, and it doesn't even have to be something as fancy as this. You can take um, here. I'll just show you. I should have brought this out already. And my bad for not doing so. That when you got to dig through the gear pile, you can do something like this. This is Grey Ghost gear. This is their lightweight plate carrier. Nothing fancy about it. Just a simple plate carrier. Um, buckles on the sides. Really, really simple and lightweight. Get something like this. Throw your plates in it. And then you can simply put a couple of mag pouches on the front of it. And there you go. If you're using it in a static position, like in your house or on guard duty, you won't necessarily need all the other stuff. You can have that in a pack or a bag that you would keep with you while you were while you were um, doing that. You could forego the mag pouches and simply use your existing chest rig um, if that's what you're running, or or even belt kit if you're running that, and just put it on over top of the plate carrier. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. Where you have to spend a lot of money and outfit it, you know, with, with pouches and stuff. Throw your chest rig, belt rig on in conjunction with just a slick plate carrier, and there you go. You've got, a, you've got an instant, instant armor set up. You're not breaking the bank, keeping things simple. I would encourage you, if you do go with a larger uh, setup like what I've got, try to set your plate carrier up as close to your chest rig or belt kit, whatever you run, as possible. That way, when you go to access stuff on it, your brain doesn't get lost of where everything is at. You keep things pretty much in the same location, same orientation, etc. Like on my chest rig, I've got all my mags in the front right here. Right side's my GP, left side's my blowout. Same, same here. I've got it on that side, and there you go. Easy to, easy to keep it all samey, samey kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think body armor does have a place for the armed prepared citizen. Um, I think you've got to keep it in the right context though. You've got to think about what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be at. Um, one thing, speaking of that, that I forgot to mention, if you find yourself still able to use vehicles, by all means, if you're traveling in a vehicle, throw that body armor and wear it. If you're sitting down driving, if you're sitting down as a passenger, why not? It's good to have that body armor then. Vehicles are bullet magnets. Roll into a, an ambush or something, might be glad you had it on. Um, if you're you know, doing security patrols around a neighborhood, say maybe you're NPT, You've got your, your neighborhood together and, and y'all are doing your thing. Maybe you've still got vehicles that are operational and you're using those for patrols. You're not necessarily just doing constant foot patrols. Hey, throw the body armor on, on and go with it. That, that gives you, you're using the vehicle as your maneuverability and not wearing yourself out physically, walking with all the body armor on plus everything else. So don't don't make it more difficult than it is guys just think about what you're going to be doing think about how you're going to have things set up 
I've got a couple of different potential options depending on what happens and what's going on that I may find myself in. So I've got both. I've got my chest rig and belt line that I run for, for foot patrols and stuff regardless of where I was at. And I've got the body armor set up for if it's a situation that I feel like body armor is a, a smarter option. The one thing I would just encourage you to do is whether it's whether it's ceramic or steel, make sure you get a good a good set front and back. Make sure you get them that are rifle rated, um, and if you go with ceramic, make sure they're standalone. You don't want to have to rely on having soft body armor in conjunction with it. Um, steel plates, make sure it's something like the AR500. Get that extra buildup that they offer just for that little bit of extra fragmentation protection from, from the steel plates, it, it'll be worth it in the long run. Again, I, I still think the steel plates for long-term um, armed citizen use is probably the best option. Um, that way you can take multiple hits over and over again and the armor's still good. Uh, I think that's the, the, the wiser investment for that purpose. But regardless of what you get, you know, just just pay attention to what you're getting. Make sure you get it. Get something that's good. Um, look at the ratings thread on it. Make sure that it covers most 5.56 ammo, 7.62 by 3.9, 308. Um, potentially even rounds like 30 alt six. Uh, those rifle rounds like that are all going to be real common. That's going to be your most common threats that you would end up facing. Whether it's you know people out there that looted hunting rifles and that sort of thing, or people with you know defensive carbines, ARs, AKs, that sort of thing, get something that's going to make sure it's going to cover that range um, of threat. So again, yes, body armor does have a place for the armed citizen. Just keep it in context. Think about when you would use it, when you wouldn't. We might go on some more about it later if anybody brings up any points that I've forgotten or, or missed or whatever. Um, look forward to, to hearing from you. Let me know. Until uh, next time, take care and we'll see you later.